Ladies and gentlemen, 200 episodes of the Mindless Horror Podcast. And I couldn't thank you guys enough for that. Um, ironically, it also happened to end on the season finale of the Goring 20s takeover here on the Mindless Horror Podcast. And with me today, you know him, you love him. Guy is one of the good fellas right here. Uh, and overall, he honestly like is probably one of you're you're probably one of my favorite characters in Goring Twenties. I'm gonna say that right now. Uh, I got I appreciate it. I got Rick Creeper, hoster of the Creep Cast. Man, how you doing, I man? Thought, I'm good. When you're talking about like iconic characters, I thought you're gonna have Clay who plays Sal, you know, the <laughs> mobster. Yeah. Or like Jenny and Andrew, they're, 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 you know, they're, 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 they're religious characters, but I guess, I guess you can find them. So you call me instead. So, you know, there it is, man. I mean, the idea behind this character, bro, how did you, what, what was, I mean, there's, I, I, I watch a lot of mobster movies myself, you know, and I could I could see a lot of those influences from that. What was something, some of the things you pulled from, from, to, to get inspiration for this character? So obviously, obviously you get a, you get a background, kind of a, a template that knots wants you to play. And they say, you know, the, the bouncer, because technically he's he's the bouncer. He's kind of the muscle for the blind tiger. He works the door. He's, you know, he takes out the trash and they're like, he looks like this. He acts like this. He's very ominous. He's very quiet, but he has a menacing prentice presence on, on, on the streets. Right. Technically, he is not part of the mob. Supposedly, he actually works for them. And so um, I started, honestly, I started watching like uh, Peaky Blinders and Boardwalk Empire. And just listening to old, like, you know, ragtime jazz music and looking at images of just like, you know, men, men's fashion from back in the day. And you didn't see a lot of mustaches on, on certain men, but like guys were kind of rough around the neck, a lot of boxers. So, so what I did, I took them to be like a bare knuckle boxer that got hired from the mob. And, you know, I had that janky mustache and normally I look like this, you know, you're around my beard. And then, um. I saw one of the other mobsters, Jeremy, he wore the shoe covers and I thought that looked dope. I'm like, that looks, that looks sharp. They gave me like a fedora and it, it, I just didn't really like the way it looked. And I started looking at different style hats and I found the, um, the bowler hat and I put that on. I'm like, I might, and I saw some like old Irish, like old timey boxers from twenties with the handlebar mustache. I'm like, all right, I'm going to rock that mustache. The girlfriend hated it for the first season. And she was just like, where's your beard? I'm like, it's just going to be for six weeks, babe. And, um, <laughs> And the character grew. It just it grew and grew. And I got inspiration from different people and different movies. And then started looking at like vernacular, like sap and all the and all the insults we have on streets and all that. And right. it just kind of grew into something like I'm like, how in the hell did this happen? And it's a trip. It just the character grew overnight. And uh probably just from like media, that's where I got my, most of my inspiration. Man, I mean, you talk about this character and and it's it's really like it's got that intimidating figure when you walk down the street, obviously, and and I I think that's that's some of the best uh, work that I've seen, it, you know, in a long time as far as putting that effort into bringing that character to life and and bringing that story to life, and to see you guys do go around and, and have some shenanigans and then kind of really tie it into a story, but have fun with it, man. I mean, that that was honestly some of my favorite nights just coming to the event and just watching you guys like tell a story and, and, and to see what pieces of the puzzle, who was going to be there and who was going to be involved with things. And there was, there was something with everybody and everybody was corrupt. Everybody was part of something, everybody, you know, I, and that's what I loved about that story that you guys told this year. Like everybody was just kind of involved with everything. And I, how fun was that for you to kind of really branch out to everyone this year? Cause it seems like you guys obviously are a huge family over there and you guys really bring it together every single season. How was it kind of always including more and more newcomers to this story? It's, it was very uh, challenging because first of all, we're, it's a different zone mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's somewhat role playing. It's not just like booga booga. We have scary. We're running the fog. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. But they're like, Hey, this, this zone has a heartbeat. You're going to have roles. You're going to have, you're going to have a uh, banter with people. And then it took not that no one, not that anybody could do it, but it took a specific person to work in that zone. And me being new, that was my first season there. Like I right. came into like a crew that was already established and I'm kind of put in a role that sticks out. I'm like, damn, but uh, I was embraced by everyone. And you just kind of play off one another. 
and it's just such a it's just a straightaway it's just a, it's not like we have a big layout like ghost town or mm-hmm. the other zones it's it's a straightaway so you really had to kind of depend on one another yes you had your you want the people you ran with but then also you had your other players because you got your grease monkeys you got your cigar girls the flappers you know the flower lady and you got your newsies and then there's the mob mm-hmm. and then you had your religious figures and then you had the party the party goers but i think we all took a little bit from each other and we knew each other's role because you're given a loose template, a background, and, and you could finagle it. And you just took inspiration. Some people took inspiration from actual movies. I was hitting people with one-liners from like Ronnie Dangerfield and like Don Rickles. People don't even know, but I just kind of jazzed it up for the you know be period accurate, or just hit them with you know one-liners from like the era. And it, you know, in any any haunt monster or scare actor, whatever you want to categorize yourself, whatever works for you, you kind of just repeat. Cause you're not, you know, you repeat, you could change it up here and there. Cause not everyone, you, not every person you see, um, has heard that line before. So work, you know, work would, uh, work was good for you. Work would, uh, works every single time, but we find inspiration from one another. And some people dive deep. Some people look into actual characters, like actual mobsters or actually, you know, go into movies, fictional or like books. And so, and also our venue supervisor, he's kind of a historian, Jacob, um, Jacob Caputo. And he always gave us like actual lore or information from the era and gave us quotes from people and they just like not only to inspire us like to be a family because we're such a tight-knit family but also to go out there and perform because it's a performance right and you're out there every night and it's fun and then we see people like we know like you guys and like oh i'm gonna mess with this right here oh yeah i think it was every night i came through i mean you and i always had an interaction like that was that was that was a given there and i loved it every single second of it it was awesome i think I mean, I mean, I think I got I called you Sasquatch a couple times. I don't know. I mean, yeah, just the <laughs> all the fun. Like I was, I was there for it. I was like, keep it coming. Like this is is super immersive. I love that. Um, what I also found really cool this year too is you were actually featured on one of the art pieces this year uh, for the into the into the fog gallery, um, and that was cool. I mean, I, I had to buy that one. That that that. I mean, that wanted poster of you um i mean that 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 is that's cool like how cool was that to to find that out well uh, i appreciate it if it wasn't for jenny um jenny who's worked at knots forever and she actually submitted a piece of none of that would ever happen but to see my face like that was an actual like selfie i took of myself and jenny hit me up she's like hey do you have any pictures of you in character i'm like yeah sure and she's like um i'm working on something like okay so i sent her one i took like my first season and next thing you know, she's like working on this rendition of the artwork. And I'm like, are you serious? And like my face out there with the character name, because um the character had a uh on based on the background, he had a last name. Right. But like the name Benny the Brick, I I came up with that and I just ran with it. Does to see like, you know, the character that's been developed since season one and then and then what I added to it season two to see like my likeness there and like my name and people are like, Hey Benny, I'm like, oh shit. And it's like it was a double edged sword. Like the money, like the money was a cool gag, but then everybody wanted it second season. <laughs> and like they wouldn't leave us alone. I'm like, damn, I created a monster. I was like, shit, <laughs> you know, just uh but you know, I had a blast, man. But to see that, to get that recognition, it was very humbling, but also it's like it was surreal. I'm like, man, you know, my dumb ass is working this event. I'm like, I'm, I'm just a normal guy. And then to get some recognition and it's like it's cool, you know. Yeah. It's nah, a trip, dude. man. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's I mean, it's awesome, dude, because I got to I got to see and that's what I love about um, the fan base of Not Scary Farm, uh, the diehard fan base, man. They just they they continue to support every single year by doing things like this, by creating content, by, you know, I'm starting to see more people do podcasts with with a lot more monsters and stuff. And it's just so cool to see how much that has come even before me, I mean, there was people doing it on newspaper articles, interviewing monsters. Ted used to do it back in the day, you know, and now you're seeing yeah, it back today. In the day, yeah. yeah, you know, and it's 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 insane to see this. And I and I that's why I think like to me, like I always say, like, you know, you can meet all these celebrities in the world, but for me, the ones I looked up, up to you are actually you guys, because I'm like, you guys are putting on performances. I know exactly like how yeah. much you guys are going through every single year, man. Like, yeah, I, I see it. I, I hear it and you know, I, I'm lucky enough to have a platform that I can provide so you guys can tell your guys' stories, you know, and, and to hear 
things like that. And so to see this fan base kind of build, especially with that 50th anniversary, man, I mean, I mean, you know, you would see the, the normal, your, your regulars every single weekend come through and, and support, you know, I mean, that's what I love about this fan base. It's a trip, man. The people that just like popped up, like you, you know, other, other, you know, uh, influencers and bloggers and podcasters that like, you guys see our hard work. You guys make us feel appreciated. Um, and even like some of the normal people that just run through, it's like, we do it. You, it there's, there's two different types of people and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's people that do it for themselves, meaning work in the event. And there's people that do it for the event. And there's some people that do it for, you know, a little bit of both. I'm not gonna lie. I do it for myself because I'm passionate, but also I do it for the love of the event and, you know, the hard work, the lack of sleep, the injuries, you know, the, the drama, you know, um, eating bad food late at night at the, at the end of the day, it all pays off. And when we see people like you, people like that are enjoying themselves or smiling or they're immersed in the world we're creating for a second, we're creating a distraction and you're immersed in this, this, this fictional, this fictional world. And we're like, I did my job. If I created, if I created an experience for you and a memory for you, then I did my job. And that's what pays off at the end of the day. When I'm mad, I got to take my hump box out of my car and I still got makeup on my neck the next day when I go to work or whatever, <laughs> or like, I'm tired and grumpy yeah. and you know, it's all worth it. So. Yeah, and I, I I I applaud you guys and have so much respect for you guys as far as scheduling goes. I mean, I've heard some of the like most craziest schedules out there just so they can make haunt work. And yeah, there there's nights you're gonna probably get no sleep. There's nights you're gonna get probably like two three hours of sleep. And if you're lucky, yep. you'll probably get that the most four hours of sleep. But you keep coming back because you love it, you know. And that's and I think that's the same thing with the fans. They keep coming back because they love it, you know. And it's 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 just. It's great to see that even though you guys are the ones telling the stories, deep down inside, you guys all started as fans and you guys, you know, always are going to be fans. So you guys are just pouring your love into these. Just like you said, you guys are pouring all this into to the to what you guys love. Um, you know, with 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 the exception of Goring 20s this year, man, w what came with that was a brand new maze for you guys as well. Room 13. I think that was a great yep. way to kind of expand that storyline and kind of, uh, you know, show more of where the Devil's Elixir came from. Um, was there anything different that they approached you guys about, like saying like you they, they give you more of a rundown of the story? That way you guys can kind of include that into the Goring 20 storyline? Directly. I gotta say this lightly. Indirectly, we were told by serpent people from the top of the hill, hey, uh, we want so and so and so and so and so and so. You guys are gonna kind of be kind of the driving force of the zone. Like you guys, the loud ones, the ones that are vocal, the ones that are quick on their toes, the ones who like kind of are on the corner jaw jacking everyone. We want you guys to kind of be the um indirect faces as far as banter like no one there's no you know we're not like egotistical about it or like oh we're better than everyone else we're all one big family that's what's different about g20 we're all family right not that the other zones don't have that but they came to us like you guys are the ones that are vocal you're the ones who are quick on your feet or you actually have like banter from that era so we want you to be a little more um innovative because of the uh, nobu necklaces so i'm like all right so we have to, we have to be smart. We have to be uh, creative. So I literally had people like walking up to me, holding it like this, like it's a crucifix. And I'm like, what am I a vampire? I'm like, get out of here. You know, I would say yeah. stuff like that or I pretend I would hiss. I go <laughs> and like, like pretend I'm scratching. I mean, it's stupid, yeah. stupid shit like that. Have fun with it. But um, Yeah. You have fun with it. And then, you know, not everybody wants to be scared. Not everyone wants to be poked fun of. And then some people get a little offended or some people actually want to talk to you. Or it's, it's what's challenges people who, you know, some people are asses sometimes, and it's just a matter how you deal with them. There's some circumstance you can walk away, but some you can just be smart back with them, and they're like, oh, okay. Or, you know, someone's like, hey, what do you think of this? And they talk about world topics of the day, and I'm just like, oh, I never heard of them or whatever. But um, I think it was just a matter of like, hey, this is how we're dealing with the note boot necklaces, but you guys are the voices of the zone, so we want you to be more vocal and like, like we started shooting dice. We started shooting dice right there on, on the, we just did it by accident. Next thing you know, we have like a line of 50 people and there was like a, a crowd watching. We're like, Oh shit. <laughs> and, um, how are we going to get out of this? And then, um, our zone manager came up with an idea where he had one of the gin runners run up and he's like, Hey, the cops are here. We got to beat it. And so like, we all scrambled and ran off That's awesome. because the, I think the band was about to start. And so like, we literally had like, there was like 50, 60 people crowded around 
that corner in front of Cordy's corner where the stack, where the, the crates are stacked and we were right. shooting dice there and we couldn't walk away. We're like, Oh shit, we're stuck here. <laughs> and it happened to us a, a couple of times too. Cause this year they told us, Hey, you guys can take pictures with guests. We're like, all right. Cause in the, I guess in the past we couldn't. So we were just standing there in front of the blind tiger. Like people want to take a picture. And next, you know, there's a line in me and other, other cast members. Like what the hell do we do? I'm like, well, I'm going to go that way. You go that way. And we just, we just took off. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, they. I mean, they kind of, you know, they trusted us. They just said, hey, this is what we're doing different. Like the witching hour thing, which happened every day on 9 o'clock, 11, mm-hmm. where we forced the uh, religious, you know, the uh, the uh, religious pair of uh, Jenny and Andrew to drink the elixir and they die. And, and like, we're all celebrating on memory lane and that. But uh, they just say, hey, just run with it and you know, continue to be spooky and continue to be creative and dance, drink, party with everyone. It's, you know. Every day's a party in corn twenties. It's like for people don't know. It's like we don't know we're dead, right? And we we throughout the night we re, we uh, relive our actual deaths. Either we kill one another or we go insane because elixir or whatever. And then the clock kind of sets and we pop up again. So we're not monsters. We don't know. Some of us are maniacal because of the elixir. Some of us are just dirty because you know we're we're criminals, right? And so, you know, but um, that's the cool thing because it's like you guys are not monsters. You know, you're not you're not crawling on the floor and all that but some do but the thing is you're 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 human and right. so that oh that'd be cool so whatever some people got a library of the background some people got a library with props so they're approved and some people just out there just hitting slides and doing pop scares and that's a cool thing because it's such a tight zone there's only like 40 of us out there and um right yeah, just, yeah it's, it's a small casting crew but you guys you guys make it work like really well with that zone yeah, it was fun man it's, it's a lot of work i mean you don't pay attention. You'll catch yourself doing figure eights all night, like just back and <laughs> forth to the fountain, to the tracks, to the tracks, to the fountains. And then you're like, I got, I better post up. I better post up. So you have to stop for a little bit. Cause it's like, Hey, it's only Thursday of week, you know, week two. So I'm like, right. okay, I better slow down. So especially, you know, we were doing five days. Um, that was brutal. I mean, I'm not going to lie by week five, my knees and back were done. Mm-hmm. And I was just like running on adrenaline and ibuprofen and caffeine and, I think I hibernated all November, but I knew exactly what I was doing. I, I wanted to go hard for the 50th and I, I pushed myself. So, you know. Yeah, no, dude, like, like I said, man, I, I, I found my, I, and that's, this goes for like the last two years since, you know, uh, the debut of it, even, you know, last year, the year prior, um, just following that Goring 20 storyline and just kind of seeing it every single year, just get better and better, you know, and, and, obviously with new people coming on, you know, or, or returning people and kind of colliding the two, I think it's just so awesome to see how well that chemistry works with everybody. I mean, like you mentioned, there were, you know, times during, you know, the, when the clock would strike, everyone was killing everyone. There was just that chemistry with people. Certain people would uh, interact with people a lot better than, uh, say this night you want to interact with that person and stuff and, and tell that storyline. And, and you just never knew what you were going to walk into this every single night. And, and, and that's what the, that was what was so fun for me is because I would come into a different storyline every single night that I came in. And I, sometimes I'd be like hysterically confused. Cause I was just like, what is happening right now? And, and then sometimes I'd be like, okay, I'm, I, I fully grasp it, but I'm still confused as to what's going on right now. <laughs> Right. We, we had a quick story. We had this kid come up to us and it's me and, and, and clay clay plays Sal. He, he's, he's one of the main mobsters, a pinstripe suit. And we're in uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was Andrew. He's, uh, um, he's the other religious character and we're standing there and this kid comes up to us and he meant to say Al Capone and he comes up and he's like, Hey, hey do you guys know Al Capino is I'm like Al Capino. We looked at each other and he, he meant to say Al Capone or Al Pacino, but he, like a hybrid and and we're right we're between the uh, the pizzeria and the queue line for room 13 which you know went up the ramp the ramp way to the theater and came down right and so me me being us being ass as we are i mean andrew we were like hey everyone i put my hands up this kid right here is looking for al capino not al capone not al pacino al capino and i'm like he's uh, uh al capone's untalented little brother and we, we just ran with it we kept <laughs> and then we just and we're making fun of this kid and we're roasting him to the line and then somehow it it turned into like capino's was like a pizzeria so we kept saying hey it's capino's pizzeria and they're like i don't know about you but i can use a slice from capino's 
and that was just a running joke. And we kept saying like, oh, I want chicken parm from Capino's. They got the <laughs> best you know, Italian sub. So this kid gets in, um, he gets in the queue line for um, Route 13 and, and he got the general mission, what has to go up and come back down. So we see him in line, I'm like, here he comes again. And we're like, hey, it's the kid Capino's. So, so we kept calling him that and he was like, Psh, man. Psh. <laughs> and so we, roast, we roasted him and right. we knew he, the exit to that maze exits through the arcade. We're right. like, let's wait, let's wait for this kid outside the hard cage. So we're like a bunch of just bloodhounds waiting for him. And we didn't see him. And then we told everyone, hey, this kid Capinos, this is what he looks like. So we told Sal, one of our mobsters. So the kid went up to Sal and he ta- he, he tapped him on the shoulder. And this Sal saw so he was, he's all, hey, it's Capinos. And that just became the running joke. Um, what I'm gonna attempt to do this year is uh, I would like to make patches. For our haunt oh, jerseys, and yeah. it says sponsored by uh, Capino's Pizzeria. Because yep. I was saying piz- pizzeria, and I'm like, pizzeria. and people are like, hey, people are, like, hey, where can we get pizza? I'm like, yeah, go to Capino's right there. You know, it's called a pizza shop, or whatever, prop pizza, whatever it's called. I'm like, yeah, go to uh, the pizzeria, the Capino's, you know, the best slice here in Memory Lane. And they're like, well, Capino's were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> it just became like the running joke, and it was oh, always man. like Capino's. And it just, I hope one day this this guy, this young man, I shouldn't say kid, young man. It applies for knots and ends up working. They're like, you're the Capinos guy. Hey, it's Capino. So He's I'm trying to make a name, <laughs> right? Capinos, right? Capinos. So I'm, it's, it's, but um, I'm trying to make it a tradition. Like, you know, that becomes the running joke. And if I can make patches, we hand them out to people. And, you know, it's like, you know, back in the day when you play like T-ball or what a little league and it's like sponsored by pizza hut or whatever. It's yeah. like, it's going to say on your sleeve, like sponsored by Capinos pizzeria. You know, I think we, we got stickers. Like- I'll happily patch that on my thing. Oh, yeah, I'll give you some stickers, bro. Don't worry about it. I'll, Knights I'll of Horror sponsored by Capino's. Yeah, Capino's Pizzeria, you know, something Dude, like that, you know. What's going to end up happening is that's going to catch on by corporate eventually to the point where they're probably going to make a banner one year just to theme at Capino's and you guys are going to start a fictional pizzeria. I, I really hope they build like a fake facade and says like Capino's Pizzeria. Oh, <laughs> man. But we were like, we were dying. We're like, I don't know about you, but like a nice chicken pond for Capinos right now and a glass of red wine. If people, where's Capinos, bro? It's right there. And it just it was so stupid. I mean, yeah, they don't even read it. They're like, they don't even say Capinos. They just walk towards it because you say it. You know what I mean? You know, half the time, you know, you, you're out there scaring and, and, you know, interacting with people. But what we also do too is we try to break each other. Yeah. Uh, I break, I break easy. This is why I'm always like this with a cigarette, like covering my mouth. Cause I'm like, get the hell, get away from me. Like the monsters, <laughs> you know? And so I was out there, you know, quoting like, you know, whoop, you know, Whoopi Goldberg. I'm like, Ooh, child. Hey y'all. And it's a uh, breaking character, of course, or just like, you know, saying dumb shit. Like, Hey baby, you know, just like out loud and saying things. And I'm trying to break the other monsters. Right. Or like I was, I was quoting like the color purple, like you show is ugly, you know, just dumb shit like that. And you're, and I'm trying to get the other monsters to break because they get me all the time. And then, mm-hmm. you know, it's just because you got to have fun sometimes. Yes. You know, oh, so yeah. I, so, so people, a lot of people take it serious. Like I get into meme, I get into like go mode, like I stretch contacts, my makeup done. I put my, I put my outfit on and I get all my props. I have my cigarette in my mouth backstage. I'm like, what do I got my cigarette in my mouth backstage? And I'm not. And just you get into go mode, but then like, you know, you got to loosen up sometimes normally it's like on Sundays and you have fun, you know, cause that's, that's what makes it all worthwhile. You know, when you're having a bad day, you can make someone laugh and there you go. Or you see someone struggling then you know, you go up to them, Hey, you good. And maybe mess with them. But, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's so much fun, man. And it's such a unique zone. And like you're having a bad day or you're tired and you're like, oh, I can't do this tonight. And you hear like, you know, the drums roll from the band and like the music's and we're like, all right, let's go. And I'm just like, like for weeks, you just got that music stuck in your head. And then they're like, by the end of the, like the run, you're like, I can't listen to the band anymore, but then you miss it. That's like, you know, has that hit you yet? Have you, have you started missing it already? Um, I started looking at pictures recently. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of the folk from haunt, you know, I keep in contact or I see outside of haunt. Right. Um, not yet, but like the closer we get to like, summer right around the time we start processing and we get invited audition again and you know um you start like all right and you get into that mode okay cool and like like for me you know it's like i try to work out year round more so before hunt just just to prep it doesn't prevent but it helps and like i'm already talking about barber i'm like because i got a new barber now and i'm like you know you're gonna have to 
do my mustache, right? And he's like, oh yeah, wrong. Yeah, I already, I already know. I'm all cool, cool, cool. You know, and like me, I'm already looking. Okay, I got to replace my haunt shoes. I got to get new socks. I got to do this. I got to go to the doctor, get a physical, and like, like, I'm like I'm joining the army or something. Right. But um, not just yet, because like you come this. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. This last year was like rough, so I needed like a long, long break. Didn't really think about it, and like, but then I catch myself like you know listening to the playlist I create, like to get inspired. Or looking at photos because we took we took some uh, we took a lot a lot of photos, you know, you know guests want to take photos. A lot of the photographers, which we all appreciate, right? And then um, yeah. you know, like I said, we're creating memories for them and not only for us but for them as well. That's what's important. It's um, you know, we do it for the event. You do it for for the build teams, the paint teams, the the, the scenic artists, you know, the costuming, you know, because especially makeup. If it wasn't for makeup, none of us would be out there. Yeah, big time. You know. Because you put me out there just looking like this in a costume, they're, oh, it's just Rick, you know. But I had people come up, and I'm like, you know, hey, pal, how you doing? Whatever the stupid accent I have. I'm like, hey, toots, hey, sweetheart. And they're, hey, they're all, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm a motherfucker. They don't even know it's me. Excuse me. I was like, they don't even know it's me. I'm like, hey. And they're like, oh, it's Rick. They're like, oh, I had no idea. And I was like, and that's the best because, like, you disappear behind, like, makeup or whatever or the character. Or, like, you know, people are like, hey, what's up, Rick? I'm like, dude, you're not supposed to say my name on stage. And I was like, you know. <laughs> but, um. Ultimately, if it wasn't for a lot, a lot of people, makeup artists, the the artists, the builders, entertainment, you know, it just none of that matters. But more importantly, the guests, because it wasn't mm-hmm. for the community, the guests, none of that would matter. Um, and that's what it's all about. You know, uh, the first time, um, obviously seeing you uh, in Goring Twenties, um, I knew one day I was like, I, I need to have this guy on the show. And <laughs> I remember talking to you. We have a mutual friend, uh, Justin, Scaredy Cat Vasquez. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember talking to you about him, and he was like, dude, he's cool. Get him on. Like, I, me and him used to do a lot of things together, and, and he's freaking funny, dude. Like, get him on. And I was like, no, I, that, trust me. It's, it's on my agenda. Um, and he talked very, like, highly of you and stuff. And, and man, I, I'm just like th- just to see your your transitions from you know like you said when you started to like this year i was seeing you like doing freaking press events and stuff i was seeing Absolutely. you freaking i was seeing you doing celebrity events and stuff i was like dude like this is insane i was there the nights you were on the carpet man like that was so cool to see that for you like to kind of get that re- what happened what blew my mind like they asked me to do that yeah, and they're like, "Keep here tomorrow at three. I'm like, "Why am I in trouble?" They're like, "No, you got to be here tomorrow uh, at three. You're doing the black carpet event." I'm like, "All right." And I'm like, hey, "What the hell is that?" They're like, "You're going to be on the black carpet with celebrities." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And it uh, that blew my mind. It was it was you had two you had monsters from each zone, and then and then the preview night, which happened in August, yeah, they had monsters from each zone. That was like we. It was weird. I'm done. I'm jumping all my stories. We went into Warehouse P where all the costumes are at, and it was empty. It was weird. It wasn't like how it was before. There was like one little rack of costumes and like two makeup artists. And, and it was like like monsters from each zone. And we're like, hey, it's August. Why are we here? And like we were representing the event, you know, while everyone else is experiencing the reveal night. And we were kind of like in that backstage area where like um, Waxworks is at. And uh, I was going to say, uh, Damn, I was gonna say uh, in the depths and all the others mazes, and they're like, "Hey, the street zone monsters are gonna be here. Greet the guests." Doing, I'm like, "It's fucking August, and we're over here." Like, like, yeah, I just got into character, and like, um, uh, my friend Jamie from what the hell's his haunt's name? Sam Haynes Lot. I know I'm gonna butcher that shit. Um, he walked up to me, and we're I was just ragging on him the entire time, and then like he posted this video on TikTok, and it went viral, and we're just oh, like man. clowning each other. Yeah, just clowning each other. But the fact, like. They just there was more of a demand for me. Like they're hey, you want to do pre scare? I'm like oh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll do it all. Yes, cool. You want to do this? You want to do that? And I'm like oh, okay, cool. And and they're like just hey, this is what we would like your character to do from this point on. Like the show moment, you're gonna get the elixir. You're gonna force you know the two religious uh, figures to drink. And they're like hey, we want you to be more vocal. We want you to do this. And they're like, I almost died working in room thirteen. I started a mazes with Sinister Point back in 2018 and Dark Harbor in 2019. Right. I'm like, oh, I, I came from mazes. I forgot, don't scare every guest, especially when mm-hmm. there's a conga line. 
and I went hard. I was in the gambling room and in the gambling room, there was like a craps table and whatever. Right. And it was my, myself and I, cause she's the female gangster and she was across the room and they had a prosthetic with a Q stick in his chest. And I was acting like I was stabbing him and like slapping his face with the money. And I was like on one knee, you know, talking trash. And I'll just get every guest, every guest. I even think I probably wasn't supposed to do. I even like totally guess mind your business. And I threw money at him <laughs> and just to walk through, you know, and, uh, 10 minutes there, I was like, okay, how about every other guest? And I free, and I, I think 30 minutes, I gassed. I'm like, I give props to Mazes. You can't get every scare because you're just going to gas out. The right. streets, it's different. And the Mazes, it's like, you know, okay, you, could, you don't have to be vocal. Uh, you don't have to like say everything same time or pop scare. You could just be uh, atmospheric. But like 15, 20, 30 minutes into it, I was like, Ooh, you know, my old ass on 47 at the time of 48 now. And it's like, I forgot mazes are work. They're hot. The costumes sometimes are uncomfortable. Like in streets, I could be like, all right, you know, run around and do, well, I'm the boogeyman. I'm going to go drink some water, use the bathroom. You got to wait in a maze to like your break or someone to relieve you. There's cast right. or B. So shout out to those maze monsters. And people are like, oh, mazes. You know what? We're all family. It don't matter. Everyone's important. Just, just all, all across the board. But they were about to have a real dead body inside that maze because I was like, I walked out dripping sweat, and, and, and you know my supervisor's like, "Go get some water." I'm like, "Cool," but uh, room thirteen was just a beautiful maze. I know some people were like, "Yeah," I'm like, "I loved it." It just I did too. That was dope. The lighting and then just that that uh, the score they used was an actual track from a band. I forget the name of the band, and just um, it it, it explained the story of Goring Twenties, and that was they're 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 our family too. They're our extended family. Yeah. They came out and did the tiger crawl dance one. I think the last night they all came out from the maze, but, um, you know, they're an extension of the zone, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. No, I, I agree with you. I know that that maze, uh, f- received a lot of like hate from it. Like, like I said, my only complaint was, it was cause of the music. And I know it was the one thing. And I kind of know the story behind why that was and everything. And I was like, okay, like I get it, you know, shit happens, you know, maybe next year they'll, they'll, you know, that's one thing they're going to look at is to let's get some, like a more score of a music in here for different rooms and stuff. I'm like, yeah, fine, cool. But as a debut maze, visually that maze was stunning. Beautiful. Um, that mean, was a beautiful maze. Yeah. I mean, going from the, the blind to actually get to go into the blind tiger like that, they pulled that right out of freaking a, a page from Halloween Horror Nights book. When I went for the 30th anniversary out in um, Orlando, they had a, a a maze based on like one of the, the the characters they have there is like a private investigator, and you go through all his like like tales and everything. But like the actual facade for one of the buildings you go in inside the maze was in the park. So to kind of see that like that new kind of world of like going, you know, you see the blind tiger and it's just a door outside of 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 the area right there, and then to actually get to go in it finally and kind of go further into that story, you know, I I think Knotts did a really good job of capturing that and and honestly placing it where it's at, you know, so. That was really cool. And then to go into the hotel and kind of get to that moment of like mm-hmm. the conspiracy theories, the devil's elixir, everything like it, it just beautiful. The coolest little Easter egg they had in there. I forget what ruble was, but also it was like the old, the periodic radio. Yeah. And you hear like the, you hear the news flash and they're talking about people dying mysteriously inside the hotel. Yeah. And they're like, you know, and it's like due to some, and it's, they kind of indicated, I think it's like reels really low. You could barely hear it. And I heard it cause we walked, through, we got to walk through personally, but to me, that was so cool. Cause like you hear, you have the atmospheric sounds going off on that track and you hear like this just ain't beep, 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 beep. And it's like a radio t- uh, personality from the era talking about all the deaths that have been happening in this hotel. And I was like, I, I know it's the smallest thing. And it just, that just blew my mind. And then the fact like there was a gag right when you walk into the, uh, the, the, the speakeasy, the bar, there was, um, I think I was on a foot pedal or a sensor where they had an actual bottle, bottle of elixir and it lit up green. And that just this green illumination just lit up the bar and whoever, whatever monster was working there. I was like, that is so dope. I was just like, dude. Yeah. I mean, Hey, by the way, did you actually get to try any devil's elixir this year? Like their actual drink they had served? Like, did you get to go um, on a night off? No, nah, that was too no. <laughs> no, it was, it wasn't bad. Uh, I think at some points I got it. There was a little, if you could, you could tell they, they did a pour a heavy pour of liquor on it, but it was pretty decent. Like I, I wouldn't say it was like the worst, but you know, it, it wasn't something I'm not much of a drinker, you know? So like I, I'll have a casual drink here and there, but yeah, it was pretty good. It wasn't bad. The only thing I wish they would have done is made it, uh, 
neon green and glow, particularly yeah. like our zone. Cause yeah. they did that for a 50th streak, but it was like the same color as elixir. And I was like, why can't we? It's like, yeah. Just throw like a freaking uh, fucking colored ice cube, you know, like yeah, that I was even yeah. suggesting that, you know, just like one of those light ice cubes to make it look green. I'm like, get it with you. I mean, I think it's, it's cool that they, they took the initiative for the 50th to kind of release more themed uh, like foods and, 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 and stuff like that for certain zones and stuff. That was, I think that was really cool. Especially if you're getting a devil's elixir and you're drinking it in the goring twenties after hearing this story, you're like, damn, this is pretty cool. Now I actually get to drink what they're talking about. Like last year, I couldn't do that this year. They introduced it. So I, I think that's uh, I think that was really cool for them to do that. But I always say drink responsibly. The stupidest gag I did with people's drinks, you know, I got the fake cigarette and I pre- I'd walk by and ash in their drinks and they're like, Ugh! I was afraid one day my cigarette was going to fall in there. But I walk by, I'd ash on people's heads and like when they're talking to someone or I'd go up to, hey, what do you got in there? And I asked, you know, my cigarette and they're like, oh, uh, I, I came very close to dropping my prop cigarette in there, you know, with whatever makeup I have on the tip of it, always in my mouth. And I'm like, dude, I'm not to buy someone a drink if that happens. But people, people get grossed out. I'm just like, hey, what do you got there? Hey, let me put a little pepper in there. And they're like, <laughs> you know, people, get, people get pissed. You know, the stupid shit we say, man, the things we do and you scare them and all that. And just don't. Dude, that, that's, thing, that's fucking, dude, I love that. I love seeing that shit. It's amazing. That's what makes haunt fun. Yeah, man. You know, some people, not everyone wants to be scared. And then at a certain time of night, people are tired of being scared. So you gotta, you gotta, um, know how to improv. Yeah. So like not everyone wants to be pop scared, you know, it's like, and, um, you, you figure out a ways to insult them or like just, you know, but dudes, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older, bro. So I guess, I guess the new thing that is like the short shorts with a, with a, with a smaller seam. I, I see guys wearing these shorts and so I'm walking by and I'm like, Hey, how's it going? Chicken legs. And you know, and I, I that's all I would say. And they'd be like, and then, it, but it was guess you pop the crowd. So when you pop the crowd, other people are cracking up. They're like, they just call like I chicken legs. Or I'm like, yeah. you know, I saw, and again, you got to be nice to an extent. I saw this dude who was like five foot nothing. And I'm like, hey, how's life on the yellow brick road? huh? And I'm just, until Mr. Oz, I said, hi. And he's like, he just what? called me a munchkin. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, man. Or just, like, you know. Dude, it's fun. It's or like fun. You, I, said, I called you Sas- Sasquatch or just, how's the weather up there? Or just yeah. Like, it's not fun. Dude, um, you could, you can go. I give it, give me your all. I, I'm yeah. not, I don't get offended. I, I, I will love every minute of it. Like you will make my night probably. I think I've told you, I'm like, Hey, tell your mama said, hi, I'll go over for breakfast. Yeah. And then the next day you're like, Hey, my mom doesn't remember you. Mom, that's a shame. Cause I remember her and you're like, <laughs> and I'm like, damn, let me talk shit about people's moms, Rick. And I was just like, but <laughs> some people are like, some people died and just, or they want to come and talk to you. They're just like, hey, how can I get in the blind tiger? I'm like, I don't know. We need some dishwashers in the back. I could put a good word in for you. Maybe sweep the floor, take out the trash or something, you know, shine some shoes. And they're like, oh, okay. And they watch. I'm like, damn, I just made fun of that guy. And it's like, you know, or like they want to get in the blind tiger. I'm like, you know, we got a dress code around here. You know, and I'm like, you might not as shop as me, but hey, you know, do what you got to do. You know, I love the first year when they, when they were really, uh, trying to push the idea of actually having the, the passcode to get in and everything like that to me was the best. Like, I don't know who started that, but that, that, I mean, I'm so glad they rolled with that. We were given a password every night from our venue supervisor. And it was always something related to like the era. Like we got like a, uh, something like, um, Errol Flynn or like Charlie Chaplin or like sap or you know that's an insult and it's like i and i was straight busting out like you know maroon so i used back in the day like in the old school like bucks bunny like looney tune cartoons you'd hear bucks Bunny go, what a maroon i always thought it meant like you're a moron and mm-hmm. no but what it was it was like you were so unintelligent or you're a fool you would end up getting marooned on an island so like when you walk through the meat grinder of insults like in the zone and, and people are like, you're getting it from every haunt monster. And I'll just go, yeah, what a maroon, like yelling out. And people are like, geez, they're mean here. And I was like, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, the password, we just had people running around. Okay, now go talk to the flower lady and get this. Or go talk to um, uh, Charlie. Charlie was the prop, or we called him Sleepy Joe. He was the prop inside the Model T at the at the trade tracks. Well, go talk okay. to my buddy Charlie. He's gonna let you in. They're like, he's dead. I'm like, I never liked that rat bastard. I didn't know I'm not supposed to say rat bastard, but I'm like, no, that serves the right, that bum, you know. And just and they're like, what's the password? I'm like, okay, go to the newsstand and talk to that guy. And we just kept sending them people everywhere. 
And they're like, is there really a password? I'm like, no, you tell me, you know, it's just, and then after a while, I think people caught on, there's no password. So it's like, yeah, that was part of, that was part of the thing. I'm like, Hey, you go figure this out and you know, I'll give you some money. And they're like, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you people, look at it and, and how many people were actually super immersed into it. You know what I mean? Like those first few weeks, like how many people were in it? We we kind of indirectly did something where somebody was hiding from the mob. And this person was hiding on the east side of town. Well, the east side of town for us is boardwalk. Right. And, we, and the boss won't let us go over there. That's what we would say. I'm like, we're looking for this guy. And we described him. One of the clowns over there ran with his background where he was hiding from a mob and he joined the circus. And we're like, okay, so we incorporated that last year. And I'm like, if you can find out who this is, they're gonna be a picture, you know, I'll make it worth your while. And some people figured out who, who it was, some people didn't. So when they found out there, is this him? I'm like, Yeah, it's him. And I I break him off some blood money. There was and they're like, I think I found him. I'm like, what's he look like? And he's wearing a dress now. He's wearing a dress. And we all start laughing. I'm like, there you go, kid. <laughs> But like I'd pay people off and I'm like, you know, and I would say, Hey, but I want my change back or like, you know, <laughs> or not, not, Oh yeah. I, you do me a favor. I do you a favor, you know, stuff like right. that. But we'd send people on wild goose chases. Like, you know, like, Hey, go over here. But, but we started incorporating indirectly their, their zone. And they're like, they, they, they loved it. I was like, okay, cool. But, um, that was, that was fun, man. Just, but I, I mean, cause sometimes like people came to the zone cause they wanted a break from being scared or they wanted, yeah, people just hang out, just hang out and watch. People wanted to dance and drink. So it's like, I get it. Cause every zone is dark, dark, dark. And then there's like boardwalk, but you get hit by clowns all day. So like, Hey, let's go to Gorn twenties, have a drink, go in the bumper cars. Yeah. Let's get insulted. People wanted to hear the bands. People want to dance. And, and it just, you have variety, which is cool. You know, yeah, you even um, had so a show people, right there too, to go inside the, the, the theater right there as well. So yeah. I mean, it was all there, man. It was all a good spot for, for a lot of things. Uh, the best was we see people eating on the outdoor, you know, we weren't, allowed to go you know we kind of did we weren't allowed to go into the dining area on the patio but they never said we couldn't go up to the railing of the board of the patio and then um if it was people we knew i can't believe i'm gonna say this um we may or may not may take their food away from them or take like a slice of their pizza or like uh it was like a, a couple that we know and i'm just like i go up to the you know the, the the female of the couple, I'm like, here, here's a, get you some, some nice toots and give her some money. And while you're at it, buy yourself a real man. And I give her more money. And it's like my <laughs> friend, he's like, Hey, he goes, you know, we're like, Hey, don't worry. I'll, I'll cover this meal. And I give him money. It's like, we had one dude. He thought we were legit playing craps. He we were like, Hey, you want to throw some bones? We're coming in. And he came up and he's looking at these all, are these regulated? He said something. And he's like, you guys playing for real money. And he's like, and we're like, dude, you're at not scary farm. We're pretending to play craps. He got mad. He was like, Psh! and he walked away. I'm like, we had this older gentleman. Oh my God. We had an older gentleman. He, he straight checked us. So it's me, Clay, you know, the Clay and Ike are the two, you know, mobsters, the gangsters. And it's me, you know, me, of course. And we got our fake money and we think we're rolling because it's his teeth. And he's like, oh man, uh, oh man. Uh. And he's his family. This old man reached in his pocket and pulled out a wad of cash like that. And he's like, there's your old man. And he's like, oh, you want to see some more? He had stacks of cash. I'm, I don't know why. And then wow. like, I'm all, and then we're like, keep it up old man. We're going to roll you over. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I got some bills to pay in real life. Rick's got some uh, bills. Yeah. Right. But, no, but, so, you know, it's the funny part about that story right there is the fact that now knots is a cashless park. So it's like, that's, that's what I'm saying. Why did this, he wasn't, you know, an older gentleman. He's probably used to carrying cash, but right. he straight up had like bills. Like he was balling. I'm like, those old man better be careful. He's going to get rolled in, in Camp Snoopy by a monster. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> going to be an accident. No one going to see it happen. Oh my God. I wasn't working that day, but um, <laughs> it's crazy times, man. It's, it's, it's been, I, I've, I've had nothing but good experiences there. Not a single regret. I've been braced and then just gotten great advice from people. No bad experiences. It's just like, you know, just like life, you have ups and downs, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the sacrifice we put ourselves through, it's all worth it. And you, you, you have an extended family you know, yeah. off season and off season. So very much. That's, yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, tell me about the emotions going into that final uh, night for the 50th, man. I mean, it was already a, a successful year. It was a great year. Um, what a way to celebrate. I mean, I think everyone 
brought their A game this year, no matter where you were, zones, maze, shows, anything uh, to bring that event to life. Behind the scenes, everything, everyone brought their A game. What was it like emotion wise for for you going into that final night? I mean, I I love kind of hearing that 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 kind of bittersweet wrap up for everybody. It's it's bittersweet because it, it goes by so fast, mm-hmm. and you and you put so much out there. And some days, you know, it's rough. Some days you're just you're you're on fire, and then you're backstage and, and you're hurt, you're limping, you're you're sick, you're tired. Or some days you're in a good mood, and at the end of the day, you're like man, it ends tonight. And you kind of get that. You get the haunt blues, but to be a part of an event that started in this industry and to be there for the 50th anniversary and be accepted by everyone and be considered by upper management, like we want you to do this. They could put They could put anyone there. You know, they know I'm not the bouncer. I play the bouncer. I, I'm just playing the character. Anyway, they could find any jagaloon that looks like me, but to be considered to, to have that role, to be had given certain responsibility and to have certain acceptance of yourself and others. And then you're there with your family. You know, there's people there that I consider family, not just because you know, not because I bonded with them on and off stage and off that, you know, off the farm. It's just so much to go through. And at the end of the day, that's like you're tired and like you're in mid season, you're complaining, you can't wait for it to end. And then it comes the last day, you're like, wow. It's the last day. And, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. And, you know, and like everyone's like, you coming back next year? I said, if life allows it, I will be back. You know, and everyone's like, I'm retiring. I'm retiring. Okay, each his own. But it's like, what if, what if they, they, these people make these hard announcements? It's just my opinion. These hard announcements are retiring, but then like, they're like, oh, I actually kind of miss it now. Um, and I get it. People have been there for 10, 15, 20 years. For me, I think I got a couple of years under my belt. But as far as emotions, it's, it's, it's very satisfying. It's bittersweet. It can be sad at times, but at the end of the day, like I drove off and I remember I was looking at the big K and I'm going up Western headed toward the 22 coming home. And I'm like, I won't be back here until next season. And I'm like, you, and you live there for six, you know, six weeks out of the year. You, you, you know, right. you, your, your significant others are at home. You know, you have haunt widows. That's, that's the term that we use. It's like, whatever relationship you have at home you're like you know you're two ships the night even though you live together or you don't and it's like for six weeks you're practically you know living a second life amongst you know a group of people at an event but at the end of the day it's like regardless what emotions or whatever experiences you had good or bad it to me it pays off and it's it's bittersweet i'm, I'm not looking for the accomplishments i'm not looking for the awards you know i've gotten some i'm just looking for the self-gratification and the seeing smiles on pe- people's faces on and off stage and that's all worth it to me. So that makes sense. Well, a hundred percent. No, I, that, that right there, everything you said that came from the heart, I could tell that came from the heart, man. And you know, it, it, like I said, man, you know, we've been going to the event full time now, you know, I've, I've gone off and on over the years, but you know, consistently I've been going back since 2018, you know, and that was my return to not scary farm. And, you know, there's just something about that place that, you know, you don't see at other haunts, you know, there is, you know, you go to the, you go to these other haunts and, it just doesn't seem the same vibe as Not Scary Farm. There's only one Not Scary Farm, and and the people that work there, whether you're where you're on the streets, where you're in the mazes, whether you're behind the scenes, you know, costuming, lighting, sound, building, props, makeup, all that stuff. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're contributing to something that's going to go down in history as easily one of the greatest events to ever be thought of. Um, and you know we've said it many times on the channel that, you know, there, there was just something about the 50th where, uh, you just, you had to be there. You couldn't, you know, you, you didn't, if you weren't there in person, I can show you a million videos, but that vibe was special if you were there in person. Um, and that being said, that that's another reason why we, we wanted to do something with the Goring twenties. Uh, we had a lot of great times in the Goring twenties this year. We thought we'd honor you guys the way you deserve to be honored, you know, and, and, it's just been it's been fun dude i i've i've gotten to talk to so many people and to hear so many stories to hear a lot of like stories like yours man and trust me i know there's there's a lot there's still a lot with you that i want to talk about that i want to say for another podcast because i you know i i wanted to do this one goring 20s i wanted to celebrate obviously having you on for the 200th episode man that's that's a another great milestone and i'm just super stoked that uh we got to make this happen and I'm super stoked that, you know, it was a, a great year and I cannot wait for next year. That being said, I know you just kind of answered that, but 
if the if if you, if time allows it, if 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 everything goes correct, the stars align perfectly this year again. Uh, can we hopefully see you back in the Goring Twenties for another season? So if everything lines up the way I want to, as far as like my life and health, and because you got to you know you got to take care of yourself yeah. in order to do things. Um, and then if the management would like me to come back to Goring Twenties, um, I'll be back, man. I'll do it. Um, I'll hopefully they don't do five days again because <laughs> that was rough. Oh, I, man. I, I would like to, to, you know, I, I was kind of a journeyman, just to backpedal real quick. I was kind of a journeyman hunter started with sinister point, 2018, 2019, sinister point, dark Harbor, uh, did some home haunts, 2020, did some home haunts, 2021, did stuff for pirates cave home haunt for, for oh, midsummer. I remember, I remember you, I remember you in pirates cave. Oh, dude. Dude, you remember that shit? Oh yeah, dude. That was, that was a lot of fun <laughs> that year. They, they, in that 21 maze, they, they changed the home haunt game right then and there. So, Jacob Larson, it was Jay of uh, Dave and Jacob Larson, son and father. Jacob's a tech in, in knots now. He's been a tech for two years. Yeah, and I'm so proud of that kid. Um, and so what's funny is because 2021, I, I chose not to, to apply for knots. I had an agreement to do some other stuff and I was going to do the 17th door. Didn't work out. Wasn't my vibe, but I did a bunch of other things. When I walked through that zone and go our twenties, the first season, I'm like, okay, this is wild. And I started envisioning this character that I played now to the way he looks, to the way he talks, to the way he acts. And I wasn't even there. I try to go um, apply as just as a um, on call, but I'm like, Hey, I got restrictions. I'm already committed to all these other haunts. And they're like, well, unfortunately we can't because we need to have an open schedule. Well, cool. I already saw this character that I kind of developed out in streets with the template of knots. And right. I just implemented that in 2022. And I'm like, Damn, I just man I just manifested that my, you know, on my own. And now I'm given the opportunity. So when year two came for me, I was like, I gotta step up my game. And if year three comes back, which would be this year, um, I would like to return and I'm just gonna have to like carry the torch of, of I created for myself the first two seasons and just build on it. And um I think Knots is home. I think Knots is gonna be the place where I hang my hat for a minute until I decide my body's like my mind and body are like, can't do this no more. And just, you know, right off in the sunset and just, and have those memories forever. It was a trip because last season was 30 years to date. It was the first time I attended the event. I attended the event when I was 15, 16, wow. back in the 90, like when it was the stone ages, you know, um, and I'm walking through, I'm walking with my hot box and character and I'm walking towards, um, our break area is called Lakeside. It's behind hang tan over in boardwalk. Right. And I see the facade of the log ride and I'm looking at it. And I'm like. 30 years ago, my old ass, 30 years ago, this around this time is the first time I attended this event when I'm 16. Now I'm 46 working this event. And I, I got emotional because I'm like, I grew up, you know, hearing this event on like being advertised on the radio, mm -hmm. seeing it, walking into 7-Eleven, seeing the ads, you know, hearing their, you know, seeing like ticket offers through like the grocery store, driving past La Palma Beach, seeing the fog roll over into the streets, hearing the screams. And that was, was terrifying because there was no internet. There was no nothing. So every monster in ghost town was 10 feet tall with shoulder pads. And then they'd grab you back in the day, you know, and that's changed now, but, but to be there 30 years later, to be considered part of this event to me, that was just, that was memorable and, and, and honorable. So, and but that's your question for yeah. you. Yeah. 30 years for you, 50 for the event. I mean, that, that, that anniversary couldn't have worked out any better for you too. So to, uh, if I could return, yes. If they want me back even better. Hopefully my, my, my knees and my back will be all right. And I'm not so moody backstage, but this old man would like to return. So we'll see. Oh yeah, man. That, that is, that's awesome to hear, dude. Cause like I said, you're one of my favorites in the, in the, in the Goring. Uh, sure. That was one of that art, those, those art pieces when they came out, that was the one for sure that I bought. Um, you know, I have the original, that, the original really? art piece. That's I, I awesome. got to hang it up. I got the one of just me. And then I got the one Jenny made of all of us. And she's like, if it doesn't sell, I'm going to give it to you. And then she just gave it to me one day. We went to a hockey game, a bunch of us. And she's like, friend, I got something for you. I'm like, damn, I got that piece. That's awesome. I'm, I'm going to block awesome. everyone else's face out and just show mine. No, I'm just kidding. But, wow, um, that's, yeah, for sure. <laughs> man, you, you, you are, you're really good at what you do out there, man. And, and just, you, you just keep doing you, man. Because honestly, like I, I'm coming through the zone every year. I'm having a great time. 
you know, I'm having a great time seeing what you guys can come up with each and every night. You know, it's it's like a it's like an episode episode of a soap opera. You just don't know what's gonna happen in the next night, and then bam, just ends. It's like wow, what a freaking someone's, finale! Someone's getting jumped. Someone's getting shanked. Someone's yeah. getting strangled. Someone someone's drunk. Uh, someone's being chased. Someone's getting a, a, a talking to. Hell, they beat me up one night. It was. <laughs> the the grease monkeys and newsies were tired us you know you're tired of you telling us to do and they jump me and I'm like all right <laughs> <laughs> why not let's just roll with it right uh, um, the best was the turf wars the turf wars was always like the newsies versus the grease monkeys oh, and, they'd, awesome. they'd, and, and they'd meet up under the bridge and it'd be a fight <laughs> it was, Dude, you know, I've, and I've heard so many stories about the newsstand alone I mean it's just that that's a that's its own that's its own that's its own monster right there. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. The newsstand is awesome. That, that's gonna. Yeah, newsstand is uh It's interesting. It's funny because, like, um, real quick about the newsstand. That we do the death scenes. The death drops three, four times a night, and All after right. a while, you're like, you know, you're like, oh, I can't do no more. So if you're near the newsstand, people don't realize the newsstand opens up. There's sliding doors. So right. when you hear that bell, if you're right there, we some of us would run in to hide, and then if you know someone's behind you, you slam the door you're like. Nah, you're gonna die. And some of the guys we got caught in the door, and they're like, "Oh, it's like, um, on the death drops, I'd fall down, make sure I land on my back, and I'll, I would do the Michael Myers. I just, I'd pop up like this or the Undertaker, yeah, just, just to mess with people. It's just, but uh, yeah, the new stand, it's um, it's a blessing in disguise, and it's just, it, it's a gag too. You call people over, you slam the door in their face, or you know, just or we pull people we know in there, get in here, you know. It's like, yeah, that's awesome, but, uh, dude. Yeah, you That's guys utilize trip. you guys utilize everything. Such a small zone, but such really, it's really great to see it utilized the way you guys do, and and really interact with whatever you guys have to your arsenal, man. And and I appreciate it every single year, man. Uh, we appreciate it on the Knights of Horror here. I know a lot of fans they uh, they appreciate seeing all the effort you guys put into uh, giving them the experience. Obviously having that opportunity to kind of dance with you guys during the jazz shows is really cool, you know, and just kind of, like you said, to interact with people and just is, with people, you know, people you don't know. Um, and to kind of have that, that, that kind of, that my, that mob mentality, you know, throughout to kind of get to play that character, you know, that that's usually what a lot of people would love to play is like that mob character, because that's that you kind of have that freedom kind of, to kind of, do and say what you want with, of course, you know, certain perimeters and whatnot, but you know, it's, it's that to me, that's, that's like a dream role right there. And that like, that seems like, I mean, you see it, I mean, you do it, it looks like a ton of fun and I don't know, I don't know if anyone can replace that from you. (laughs) It's fun, man. Um, we would get, you know, there's, they sell coffee right outside our zone by the fountain, by Cordy's corner. And we get live with people. We get live with people and I'm like, they're all, and we ordered, we ordered like just random coffees. So we're like, hey, this guy's going to pay for it. We're like, and he's like, I am. I'm like, you are now. They're like, oh, okay. We, no, no, we're just kidding. We're just kidding. <laughs> you know, you know, that's the stuff that makes it worthwhile. But I appreciate you with everything you said, man. And, and the support from all you guys. And, you know, you show us love. And, and like, we know you guys want it. We're like, oh, here comes that mother effort. Okay. Yep. I'm just messing with them again. That's yep. like, all right. It's like, I'm, we, all, I'm here people, for it. There's certain people on our radars we see. We're like, oh, you're back again. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> Let's see what we can do tonight. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, man. Um, well, before uh, I, I, we sign off with you tonight, because, you know, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you, getting to know you a little bit. Um, I definitely want to have you back on in another episode uh, just to mm-hmm. talk more haunt with you, because it's been, it's been on, on, truly an honor, man. Uh, you are honestly one Thanks, of my man. favorites in the Goring 20s, and to finally get to talk to you, man, that, that, that's been pretty cool, you know, and um, I have to ask you probably one of the hardest questions, but it might not be too hard for you. We'll, we'll see what's up. Sure. We'll see what's up. What's your favorite horror movie? Um, John Carpenter's Halloween 78. The original. Got the boogeyman. Well, you can't see, but I got the boogeyman right there in my phone. I'll show you next time I see you. Got the that's boogeyman dope, right though. There. Yeah. yeah. I got his knife. Okay, there we go. A little pumpkin okay, piece yeah. in there, you know? All right. My, my girlfriend has the second part of, like, the eye coming out of the pumpkin and stuff, so it's kind of like a whole okay. little piece. That's yeah. dope. But um, awesome, dude. I, 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 that's a classic, and I and I saw that with the sit-up. You brought that up, and those and honestly, the two references you brought up are the two references I always thought of. I was like, either Michael Myers or The Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Um but dude, uh, again, thank you so much uh, for all you do in the Goring Twenties, and, and and with everyone, 
that's contributed to the Goring 20s. I mean, it's it's truly uh, a blessing to see that every single year, and I look forward to it every single year, and I, I can't wait to see what happens this year. I mean, 51, man, you're going to have a whole new uh, crop of people coming in, and mm-hmm. it, it's going to be a lot of fun to see uh, what that new talent has to bring to the table, man. Uh, I'm super excited to see it, and I can't wait to see what you guys do to continue your guys' stories. Um, and I just, I'm excited to, to just be back in that atmosphere again, man. We're, we're already halfway there. So we'll mm-hmm. see what happens now, man. One thing I say backstage to everyone and to like, just in life, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself by. Right. So if you're surrounded by talented people at haunt, then guess what? You're going to produce because they're producing or you're surrounded by good people. Then no, none, none of this matters. It doesn't matter if I got rookie of the year, 2022. It doesn't matter if I got this, I got that. Cause if it wasn't for the people around me. I will not be earning that stuff. And when I earn, when I get acknowledgements, that's representative of them as well. So it's not about me. It's about the people I'm around. It's about the event. Yeah. And the guests like, so. Indeed. I couldn't have said it better myself, man. Uh, Rick, for all those that uh, want to keep up with you, sure. and I know you have the podcast that is right now it's on a hiatus, but I know you, uh, you do do episodes and you do plan on coming back in the future pretty, uh, when you get it all sorted out. Um, where can they find you? Where can they stay up to date with that? Uh, you can find me at Rick Creeper 11 on Instagram and there I have a link to the Creepcast hosted by Rick Creeper 11. It's on Spotify and every other major platform. Out there. Good stuff, man. I've, I, I've heard multiple interviews this guy conducts. I mean, you just heard the interview right now. I mean, this was, this was essentially the trailer. So you can go to his and, and listen to more of his <laughs> voice. It's, it's amazing. There we, there we go. <laughs> there we go, man. Well, hey, man, I appreciate your time today, man. And, uh, thank you for being part of the Goran 20s. Thank you for, uh, being a part of the, the celebration of the 200th episode of the podcast, man. Uh, I, I'm truly, uh, I, I never thought I'd make it this far doing this show and you guys, uh, every single week support and you guys are vocal about who you guys want to see on the podcast. Um, and we hear you guys, we see it all and we are happy to, uh, get a list going and try to start checking off all those names that you guys want to see on the show. We are going to continue to do it. Uh, and here's to, uh, here's to hundred more. Let's get to 300 now and so on and so forth. But Thank you all. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you. And uh, until next time, stay spooky.